we offend, it is with our good will. That you should think we come not to offend, but with good will. To show our simple skill, that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then, we come but in despite. We do not come as minding to content you, our true intent is. All for your delight, we are not here. That you should hear repent you, the actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. <clears throat> this fellow does not stand upon points. He hath rid his prologue like a rough colt. He knows not the stop. A good more, my lord. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain, nothing impaired but all disordered. Who was next? Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. And this man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, a Thisbe, is certain. And this man, with lime and rough cast, doth present a wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper, at, 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 at the which let no man wonder. This man, with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn, presenteth moonshine, for, if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus' tomb, there to woo. This grisly beast, which by name Lionheight, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. And on comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat, with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely breached his boiling bloody breast, and Thisbe, tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and the lovers twain at large discourse, while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be like to speak. No wonder, my lord, one lion may when many asses do. In this same interlude it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think, that had in it a crannied hole or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often very secretly, This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall, the truth is so. And this the cranny is, right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. <gasps> Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. O oh, grim-looked knight, O oh, knight with hue so black, O oh, knight whichever art, when day is not. O oh, knight, O oh, knight, alack, 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 I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, that standst between her father's ground and mine. Thou wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eyne. Thanks, courteous wall, Jove shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see. O oh wicked wall, through which I see no bliss, cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. No, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Tisby's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see. It will fall, Pat, as I told you. Yonder she comes. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans, for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love! Thou art my love, I think. 
Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace, and like thy manda, am I trusty still? And I, like Helen, till the fates me kill. Not Shaphalus to Procrus was so true, as Shaphalus to Procrus I do you. Oh, kiss me to the whole of this vile wall. I kiss the walls whole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straightway? Tired life, tired death, I come without delay. Thus have I, Wall, my part discharged so, and being done, thus Wall away doth go. Now is the mule down between the two neighbours. No remedy, my lord, when walls are so wilful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff that e'er I heard. The best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse if imagination are meant. It must be your imagination, then, and not theirs. If we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts in, a moon and a lion. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion, rough in wildest rage, doth roar. And know that I once snug the joiner am, no lion fell, nor else no lion's dam, for if I should as lion come in strife into this place, to a pity on my life. A very gentle beast, and of good conscience. The very best at a beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. This lion is a very fox for his valour. True, and a goose for his discretion. Not so, my lord, for his valour cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valour, for the goose carries not the fox. It is well. Leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. <laughs> this lantern doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. He is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. This lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man in the moon, do seem to be. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How is it else, the man in the moon? He dares not come there for the candle, for you see it is already in snuff. I am a-weary of this moon. Would he would change. It appears, by his small light of discretion, that he is in the wane. But yet, in courtesy, in all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is to tell you that the lantern is the moon, I the man in the moon, this thorn bush my thorn bush, and this dog my dog. Why, all these should be in a lantern, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes Thisby. This is old Ninny's tomb, where is my love? <laughs> well, Lord Lion. Well run, Thisby. Well shone, Moon. Truly, the moon shines with a good grace. Well moused, Lion. And then came Pyramus. And so the lion vanished. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For, by thy gracious, golden, glittering streams, I trust to taste of truest Thisby's sight. But stay, O oh, spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes do you see? How can it be? O oh, dainty duck, O oh, dear, thy mantle good, what's Stained with blood. Approach, ye furies fell. O oh, fates, come, come, cut thread and thrum, quail, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Oh, wherefore nature did thou lions frame, since lion vile hath 
ne'er to float, my dear, which is no, no, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears confound, out sword and wound the pap of Pyramus. I had left pap where heart doth hop. <gasps> thus die I, thus, thus, thus. <gasps> no. Am I dead? Now am I fled? My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now die, 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 die. No die, but an ace for him, for he is but one. With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back to find her lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Methinks she should not use a long one for such a Pyramus. I hope she will be brief. A moat will turn the balance. Which Pyramus, which Thisbe, is the better? He for a man, God warrant us. She for a woman, God bless us. She hath spied him already with those sweet eyes. Asleep, my love. What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, oh, eyes, speak, speak. Quite dumb, dead, dead. A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. These lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan, his eyes were green as leeks. Oh, sisters three, come, come to me with hands as pale as milk. Lay them in gore, since you have sure, with shears his thread of silk. Tongue, not a word, come trusty sword, come blade, my breast in rue. <laughs> And farewell, friends. Thus this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. <laughs> Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. No, I assure you, the wall is down that parted their fathers. Would it please you to see the epilogue, or to hear a burgomask dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. Never excuse, for when the players are all dead, there need none to be blamed. Marry, if he that writ it had played Pyramus and hanged himself in Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. And so it is, truly, and very notably discharged. But come, your burger mask, let your epilogue alone. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Lovers, to bed, tis almost fairy time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn, as much as we this night have overwatched. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends, to bed. A fortnight hold we the solemnity, in nightly revels the new jollity. <laughs>